would like to thank everybody who came today to our financial literacy movie night community outreach event. One of the objectives that we're working on in Region 1 is to promote financial literacy. We know that there is a big problem in the RGV as far as credit scores and we just need to get the word out for our kids and today we're going to have uh, Capital One so graciously has uh, volunteered to help us with this event. And the reason I picked this bank is because this is the old San Benito Bank and Trust. This is a very historical bank. Um, when I was asked to do a presentation for my colleagues at Region 1, I showed the picture of the bank with the mud in the front and pigs all over in the front. So it's like a very historical bank. And I know, Eribeto, are you going to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, just a brief uh, thing about the, brand, uh, the, the bank here. Um, the San Benito Bank and Trust Company, that's how it started. It started uh, back in 1908. Um, it, uh, a year after founding San Benito, the institution was founded by, uh, by two brothers, uh, W. Scott Hayward and Alba Hayward. The bank was moved here in 1911 when work was completed on the Spanish colonial revival structure. So the second floor housed officers, offices and the city library organized at this site in 1914. Flags flown from the building warned area farmers of bad weather. It was first occupied by the San Benito Bank and Trust Company until about 1990. It was later sold to Coastal Bank. Uh, in 2003, Coastal Bank sold it to Ivernia Bank of Louisiana, and today Ivernia Bank is now uh, Capital One. So Capital One is now the San Benito Bank and Trust. But we do have a little gallery of pictures of our city and its initial foundations and our forefathers, Robertson, he's back there. I've you know, frequented Robertson and Sam Houston, never even knowing who they were until I, I saw. So you know, this bank is over 100 years old. We're very proud uh, to be from San Benito and to be hosting an event in this particular bank. We're very proud of our district and what we do in San Benito High School. Uh, Melissa Lopez, can you please come up? Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Does everyone understand English? Or necesitan que les traduzcan español? English shows, okay, great. Okay, my name is Melissa Lopez. I'm with Region 1 Education Service Center. And just so you know, if you are a student, a 10th grade student, and of course their parents, uh, you're part of the Gear Up program. Uh, and one of the really important in components is financial literacy. Uh, we want you all, as you're going through high school, college, and beyond, to be really informed when it comes to making wise financial decisions. And one thing that we always say is that we in education sometimes are not the expert when it comes to appropriate finances. I'll be very honest with you. I've made a lot of mistakes that I didn't even know I was making until I started working with and you know learning from folks such as Cynthia Graham, the staff from Capital One and other local banks. Um, so the information that we're getting, we want you all to get too because it's really important that we start planning early on. Um, so I want to thank uh, uh, Ida and Patty for coordinating Patty. for coordinating this event, and uh, Mr. Sanchez, principal, My principal, for being here. Happy process day, sir. <laughs> and also, we have Luis, who has helped also with uh, parental involvement. Oh, he, he helped is. get the word out as well. And of, course, and of course, Capital One for opening up their doors for us. And yes, Cynthia is one of the Cynthia Galapa Graham is one of the uh, our leads. She has been this from the in it from the beginning. So we appreciate all her expertise, time, and of course, their beautiful building. I'm curious, you know. Yes. To see yes, the rest check it out. <laughs> so, so this bank you. is over 100 years old. It just, just blows my mind. But is there something you would like to say now? Yes, I'd love to. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, as they mentioned, my name is Cynthia Kalapa Graham, and I'm the district manager and the area president for Capital One Bank. And at Capital One, it is so important to us to give back to the communities where we live and where we work. And our partnership with Gear Up really means a lot to me because I'm so passionate about education myself. And uh, I know the importance of, of preparing financially so that our kids can go to college because that's how we're going to be able to affect changes in the region, the entire valley, is by educating our kids so that they can come back and they can be our doctors and our lawyers and and our city commissioners and everything like that, but it all starts with education. So uh, being serving on the, on the Deep South Texas Financial Literacy Alliance, which was instituted by Congressman Ruben Hinojosa, and you know, I, I, I'm so lucky to be able to work with the Gear Up staff and, and other key leaders from 
from Wells Fargo and from um, Lone Star, IBC, yeah. So, so you know, we, we work together, even though traditionally, you know, we may be competitors, but when it comes to our communities, we all want to work together um, so that the community benefits. So welcome to our bank, and, uh, and thank you so much for participating tonight. Uh, as Melissa said, my staff, uh, actually we have, uh, in the district, we have a total of 14 branches that are here and in San Antonio. And all of the branches, all of the teams in the branches frequently go out and provide financial literacy to schools, to community groups. I mean, literally on a weekly basis, we're out in the community because it's so important. There's so many different issues, you know. I was a victim of identity theft, or how do I repair my credit, or how do I go, what do I do, you know, I want to buy a home and I've never done it before. And a lot of these things can be very overwhelming, but you just need somebody to help you understand the ins and outs, and, and then it becomes, you know, it, it becomes easier, you know, to get through. But certainly educating our kids and starting them out with a, with a proper savings account when they're very, very young, you know, we're, we're doing Gear Up students now, but really, we would really like to help students at a very young age because that's when it starts. Um, that's when we need to start planning um, so that when they are ready to go to college. So thank you so much for being here. And again, my team is here. I'd like to introduce our, our branch manager of our Sam Houston branch. Hi, everyone. This is Jerry Castillo, and um, he and his team is here. Anytime, anytime you all want to come in and talk about anything having to do with financial literacy, we'd be happy to help. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Cynthia. It's very exciting to be at the forefront of all of this information. I asked uh, one of our political, uh, newly elected Justice of the Pieces, uh, Guadalupe Ayala, to come really quick and uh, speak just on behalf of what we do. I've, I went to school with Lupe, uh, and uh, we've both been public servants for decades. He was a police officer, and now he's our Justice of the Peace. So I asked him, uh, Lupe, talk to them about you know, like the importance of saving for college. He says, well, I've got kids that are paying loans, and that's what we don't want them to do. <laughs> really quickly. Hi, I'm Guadalupe Ayala, born and raised here in San Benito, and I love my city so much that, you know what, my priority was uh, finish school because uh, we were migrant workers, and my dad and my mom, they came from Mexico, and we were seven brothers and four sisters, and uh, we had it hard. I mean, we didn't know any better because uh, we used to buy those seniors by 21, and not even know what's a, what's a loaf of bread or churches or pizza or anything like that. We just, like anybody else, we're just eating that beans, rice, and potatoes, and that was it. And we were satisfied. But um, back in 68, we moved to San Benito, and then I started to move more items and more things were available. And uh, we were migrant working. We used to go to New York for about 16 years. And uh, I go, you know what? This is not a life for me. I got to finish school, and I got to go to college, or else I'm going to be here doing this all my life, and I don't want to do this. And uh, sure enough, we used to come back in like in October, they used to send us to Fred Booth. And Fred Booth at sixth grade, they used to give us a diploma. And they go, come to give them a diploma if you haven't finished school. Because most of you guys are not going to finish high school, so at least you're going to get a diploma. That's how sad it was. And I go, you know what? Not anymore. <laughs> I got wow. to finish school, I got to do better, and I got to prove everybody wrong that I'm going to do something better with my life. And sure enough, I finished school, went to college, joined the Marine Corps. And after the Marine Corps, I uh, became a police officer for 23 years. And I used to talk to kids, do uh, presentations. I used to be a canine, I used to be a, be a special investigator unit, rack addiction, and a uh, supervisor. I mean, you name it, I did. I mean, it was, it was fun, it was hard, but it was a challenge. And I could have gone somewhere else, but you know what? I wasn't happy if I uh, could have gone somewhere else. I go, you know what? As long as they pay the bills, I'm going to stay here do something for I did something for my country, I'm going to do something for my community, and I stayed here. And uh, you know what? It was satisfactory uh, work and everything. It paid off, and I made a lot of friends, and I made a lot of people. And you know what? I just do to serve my community as much as I can. My daughter, Cecilia, she's here. She's a twin. I got a boy and a girl, and I have another daughter. And my wife, a matter of fact, uh, she's, she was also a migrant worker. And uh, she's just going to retire this coming Friday. After 30 years, she's 29 years with the Texas Department of Human Services also. So. And I'm a new elected uh, just to the peace also. I just wanted to join here first. I'll be swearing. Thank the Lord first. I mean, I always wanted to 
keep on serving the community, you know, as much as I can help them out. And I want to change that image that the door is going to be open and I'm going to be out there to help them out, not to put them in jail, not to punish them or, or take away what they don't have. I'm there to help them out as much as I can, work on something, because the people were the ones that elect me, not the county, not the state, or anybody else. I'm there because of the people, and I'm here to help out the people as much as I can. So thank you very much. So you need to help us promote financial literacy yes. and the See that? She's going to talk about you, about the college, and loans, and what not to do. So, you know, what we, what we promote with Gear Up is we want the kids, you know, there's many types of fin uh, financial aid, right? We've got the scholarships and the grants, which are the free money. Then we have the loans, and of course, work study at the universities. What ends up happening, you know, for those kids that are very ambitious, and they get the scholarships, and great. That percentage is very low, for the most part you know, they end up getting loans and then guess what? They end up with a house payment, you know, when they graduate. And that's what we're trying to prevent. Is there anything you'd like to say, Ms. Penny? Uh, yes, I'm Patricia Sandoval, also one of the gear facilitators at Samuel High School. And I was very excited when uh, I decided to spearhead this project, this uh, event today, because I reflected back to when I was going through school. My parents were both uh, paraprofessionals here in the district. My father worked for the mains department and my mother worked for the cafeteria, the food service department. And yet, when we apply for financial aid, guess what? We didn't qualify for not one dollar. Not one dollar. And so it was a hardship for me to go to college. And at the time, uh, we had some other family events that happened, and uh, we had to end up taking a loan out to build my grandma a house between my mom and several of her sisters. So that was an extra payment on top of everything else. And I worked, and I had to pay my car and my insurance. But it was hard. Sometimes we'd have to charge on a credit card. And we didn't have the awareness of going to borrow in a bank, at a bank, maybe because um, it was different times. Maybe they didn't know, to, uh, maybe they were intimidated to go into a bank. I don't know what, what the issue was. But at any rate, it wasn't until my second year in college that uh, somehow we were enlightened to go to a bank. We went to Harlingen Bank. Uh, why not San Benito? I'm not sure. <laughs> All I know is we ended up at a Harlingen National Bank, I think it was some, some Harlingen Bank. and. Um, we applied for a loan, and it, that was the first loan that we had. I, they gave it to me under my name, so I began establishing my credit. And, uh, you know, my mom and I just went in, and I spoke to, I don't even remember who it was. It was such a blur now, right? But uh, I can't believe, I wish I could remember, you know, his or her name. I can't remember if it was a male or a female. It was difficult times. But uh, I appreciate the fact that that person took, uh, took a lot of uh, courage to, see a 17, 18 year old kid there, well, 19 years old at the time, and entrust a loan you know, to this child that I was gonna pay it back and, you know, under my own name. But it gave me the motivation to continue in school. And so that's what we wanna do, is bring the awareness to you all that uh, credit cards most definitely are not the way to go. We have our, so many bank institutions here, so many, so many, we're such a small place, we're such a small region, and we have so many bank institutions here. So there's, there's no reason why we cannot go through our local banks or credit unions and uh, look to them first before going to the credit cards or the payday loans or anything that way. They're, we're here to, to help each other in our community. It's money in, in our pockets in the, in the big picture, right? So, yes, thank you, Patty. So, uh, is there anybody that I forgot I to introduce? Oh, you, did, did you want to say something about the, Come on. She just finished college. Give us a little testimony. Okay. Um, well, I graduated from the University of Texas Pan American in 2010, and I am, um, you know, amazed at the job that you're all doing. That's very awesome. Um, I graduated from San Benito High School um, in 2005, I guess, and um, I did get a few scholarships and financial aid. So my freshman year, I was pretty good to go um, at the university, but sophomore, junior, senior, I actually took five years to graduate because I got a double major, but I did get loans through the government and a personal loan through the outside. And I'm still sadly paying those back. I can't get a house right now because I'm having to pay the loans back as well. And it is very difficult having to budget a huge payment for a loan when I know that money can be going towards a house or a new car or something like that. So this program that they're doing, please take advantage. I'm hearing this right now and I think I should have done that even when I was younger and stuff. But it's just, it was easy to get a loan or whatever. So, I mean, it might take a little extra work having to save, you know, a little bit of money every month or, you know, whatever you might be getting paid or from your allowance. But please do it. It will pay off in the long run. 
Thank you so very much for your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Just very quickly, the way uh, our agenda is going to run, the bankers are going to conduct a small presentation. Uh, then we're going to have a little intermission where we're going to serve you all hot dogs. You can come and get drinks and hot dogs. After the presentation, we're going to do a short 30-minute film, and then we will conclude. There will be prizes. And we okay. have Mr. Sanchez, our high school principal, yes, would like to say a couple of words to you all. Mr. Sanchez? Today is Boss's Day. Today is Mr. Sanchez's day. Good afternoon. First, I want to thank all of you for being here, parents especially. It shows how much you care for your children and how much you know, you're getting ready to maybe send them off to college and somewhere. Um, I think that all the people that have spoken before me are pretty much hit by we're here this evening. But I also want to just reiterate a little bit is literacy means so many things. And I know tonight we're talking about uh, how to get your children to, to college and that sort of thing. But also, I think one of the most important things as parents that we can give our children is how to spend money wisely, how to save. That's so important. You know, sometimes we're on television and we're watching these commercials and they're selling cars. And I'm going to use that for an example. They say 0% interest or they say three, $5,000 cash back. Well, how many of us know exactly what that means and how that works? Yes. And, and so that's important that we pass that on to our children so they know how all that works and, and how much money and interest and all that's important. So that's also part of literacy. I also want to thank Capital One for tonight. I, on behalf of Samuel High School, we really appreciate what you're doing and helping us with our parents and all. And I want to thank you for such a beautiful building. I am. Um, I'm just reliving memories. I, Me my grandparents owned the bakery right down the street, oh, La Especial, wow. yeah. and uh, well, my uncle owns it now. And it's funny how things have changed. They used to they used to send you walking with a deposit every day to the bank here. I mean, how many people would walk down the street now with, a, with, with money in, 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 in a bag? But you know, it looks beautiful, and I remember the picture still. So thank you all very much for for doing such a great job with the building and helping us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Mr. Just very quickly, Luis Gonzalez, he's our uh, director for uh, parental involvement and has been helping us with this project as well. well. Good evening, everybody. I'm so glad to see a lot of parents, especially children here. And it's very true, some of us took different roles when we were in college. And so it takes a, a lot of planning, it takes a lot of uh, thinking ahead. A lot of I, one of my colleagues that I work with, uh, they did a very, very smart thing. A few years ago, about 20 years ago, Texas had a, what they call the Texas Tomorrow Fund. Oh, yeah. And what they did is they would buy into, they would buy the tuition at that time and then uh, they would set aside money so they would make payments towards paying out that tuition at that rate that was 20 years ago. So as we were talking, uh, she was able to, her and her husband were able to put enough money in there and, and locked in their tuition at the cost 20 years ago compared to now. So when their son was ready to go to the University of Texas, his tuition was at the rate that was set 20 years ago and the monies were already there for him. In fact, he graduated, uh, he graduated and, and he has, still has monies left so that he can get his master's degree. So that's very creative planning. They don't have that uh, program anymore. I wish they did have that program, but that's the creative program that we have to have. So when they talk about uh, financial aid or getting ready for college, it's not the junior year or senior year. It should be kindergarten or it should be even before sure. that. You shouldn't put $20 or $50 or in, you know, get your income tax at the end of the year, put in $100 or something because it's going to get very expensive. The other day I found uh, a tuition, my, my uh, first tuition receipt. It was for 14 hours that I started here at South Post and uh, 20, I took 14 hours and it was $149 tuition. Wow. And that was in 1983, uh, my freshman year. So can you imagine that doesn't even buy you one book? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So the tuition has skyrocketed. Three so years. can you imagine now, and can you imagine the yeah. ones who are kinder, first grade, what their tuition is gonna be like? So we have to plan. We have to plan and we have to educate our, uh, our parents and our children, uh, students, so that they can, uh, you know, plant this tent because it passes by fast. So I'm glad you were here and I hope you get a lot of information. And I thank the bank also for hosting us as well. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Monsanto. Okay, so let's go ahead and get on with the show. Uh, the bankers want to get money? How much time? 
That's much time as you need. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we are actually very excited to have you here. It's a great opportunity, uh, you know, to come and, and share with the knowledge that we have with you. Uh, we want to pass this on to our future generations. Uh, but before that, you know, credit, savings, all that is important. But who can answer me, how, will that, how do you start? If you wanted to save, what's the first thing you want to do? You got to budget yourself, you know? Because if you don't have a budget, you don't know how much you're going to be saving. Uh, have any of you ever taken time and sat down and said, you know what, let me see how much money do I make, how much money do I bring in, and how much money do I spend? Any hands, any hands? Yeah? That is the first step, you know, because there's a lot of wants and there's a lot of needs. Uh, wants is a lot. We want everything, you know, but do we really need that? You know, and sometimes, you know, when, when that's what gets us in trouble sometimes because, uh, when you want something, we tend to get very impulsive. And we go right ahead and just purchase it. Uh, but do you know if that's in your budget or not? And uh, we, we, I'm giving you, we gave you a little, uh, a little bag. And there's actually a form there that's going to talk about, there's a budgeting worksheet, which that's going to be the homework that I'm going to give you all. <laughs> so you could actually test yourselves and see uh, where do you stand. <coughs> It's uh, it's uh, something like it's not there. Oh, okay. We'll give it to you. Okay. Okay. So we'll pass that on. Uh, but what what that's going to ask you is uh, you know, and, and take some time and really, if you really want to say, this is the way to start. You know, put your paychecks. How much, you can do it weekly by weekly or monthly, and then start deducting how much you're spending. Uh, how many of you eat out daily? Uh, yeah, so think about it. I mean, I know some people that spend probably $30 a day out, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When you add that in five days, that's $150. But sometimes we don't see it, you know. We actually just think of the day, but we're not looking at the big number. When you see the month, that's 450 That's actually a car payment that you're spending just in eating out daily. Just by cutting that in half, that's $200 extra you have. Uh, for things because uh, by budgeting you don't know you know if you want to do if there's something you want to get how would you know that okay I want to buy a car in a year from now or I want to do you know I want to do a trip for my family how will you know if you don't even know you know like how much you're making how much is going out uh, and it's a lot of things into budgeting you know because uh, that's how you're going to know if you, if you say you know what I'm, I'm gonna set a plan to spend five to save five hundred dollars a month then that's when you start you know you adding and subtracting. But there's a lot of ways on saving too. I mean, light. I remember my dad, you know, he would be on top of me the whole time because I left the lights on. I didn't understand back then, I'll be upset. Or I left the faucet open and he'll be upset at me because I left it open. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever. But now that I'm an adult and I have to pay bills, I'm like, oh, okay. Yes, now I understand why he was on top of me the whole time. And he, you know, and that will say, he was like, no, that's a lot of water. You know, you go too much to the restroom or the light's on. Hey, <laughs> But simple things like that, just by that simple stuff, you know, it pennies that up, you know. I made a, a sim, you know, I just moved here to, to the valley, uh, and when coming here, I needed to, like, get rid of a car. So, you know, I said, you know, I gotta get, you know, it was kind of, you know, weighing in, maybe I need to sell this car. And I said, okay, so I just took it at CarMax. That's it, I took it at CarMax, and, I, and, I, and I'm an adult already, and I'm kind of, you know, I like to budget and do things. But I, was, I think I was a little lazy. We're not taking another extra 30 minutes and going to get another appraisal at another dealership. I took what they gave me. Well, with that appraisal, I come to find out a week later, I could have earned $500 more. So, you know, things like that, guys, you know, don't settle just for the first time. You know, when you go and buy something, if you really want it, if you really want to use it, if you really need it, go someplace else. Don't go for the first bite. Because you're going to start realizing that there's a lot of other places that you might get the same thing and it's going to be less. When you go to Walmart, how many of you do price checks at Walmart? You see? You know, you just, that's it. You know, you just go to the cashier and you tell them, can you do a price check on this? And you might save two, three dollars, but if you go into Walmart, you know, every week, you know, that's 15, 20 dollars more a month that you'll save yourself. Uh, but for, to, to me, this, this is where it starts. Because if you're planning, you know, for the future, it's by budgeting. 
And also, you know, planting the seed to your kids from the, just the same way when they walk out the door and say, hey, behave good in school, do this, do that. You know, talk to them about the importance of savings. Nowadays, you know, we were talking earlier, nowadays, I mean, I've been in banking for almost 20 years, and I don't see kids anymore walking with a piggy bank to the bank. I don't see that. You know, and I remember back in the day, they used to carry a piggy bank, and they were all excited, and we will give them a receipt, and they left all happy because they were coming to the bank to put money. And that's because, you know, our parents planted that seed from small. And when you grow up, they say we become our parents when we get old. And guess what? It does work, you know? It does work. So my, my thing is just, you know, talk to your kids. But it's, gonna, it, it's something that it has to be a long-term plan. It can't just be, you know, now and now. If you really want it, you know, this is, this is the country of opportunities, and we have to pass that on. Anything else? Uh, you have any questions? What, what do you think about uh, having CDs for short and long-term goals? Uh, you know, that all depends on the on the actual person. I mean, if you don't have if you don't have any use for that money, and you're not going to have you know an emergency, and you're okay with like putting it and locking it, that's fine. But you know, nowadays CDs are not paying as much as they used to. Uh, there's actual savings accounts that will give you the benefit of you need to withdraw, you can withdraw. Uh, so it all depends on the client. Uh, you might earn 0.10 a little more in a CD than a, than a savings account. But it, it's going to come down to you. I mean, I think the CD thing is, it could be a positive thing because guess what? If you're going to go withdraw that money, there's going to be a penalty. So a penalty is going to make you think twice yeah. of getting to that money. So yeah, it could work in a positive way. But for kids, guys, start a savings account. Make it fun, you know? Instead of, if you give him $10, you gotta say, hey, five of that is going to the bank. The rest you can spend it. But start planning that seed. And do your homework. You'll be surprised how much you can save by cutting some things back. Thank you. And now I'm gonna introduce another branch manager. She's at uh, Bronzeville and Diana Delaunay and Morrison. Thanks, Terry. Well, good evening, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for having us, and thank you so much for being here. Um, my piece is going to be on um, on lending, you know, and, and, and not so much lending, but the importance of credit. You know, earlier um, we heard someone saying, you know, we hear ads on TV about, you know, 0% APR or 0% down if you're going to buy a brand new car. Well, guess what? You're not going to get these offers if your credit is not good. So let me ask a question. I would like to sh uh, raise your hand if you have, if you know what your FICO or your credit score is currently right now. Okay, so now raise your hand if you've no idea what I'm talking about. If you don't know what a FICO or a credit score is. Okay, okay. So 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 there are three credit bureaus. Okay, that we that we utilize, and all the credit companies, banks, credit unions, uh, uh, auto finance, anybody that finances monies to you, you we report. We report how you pay. Bottom line, <laughs> that's what we report, and we track your credit as to how you are paying. Are you paying on a uh, on a time you know timely all the time? Are you late 20 days, 30 days, 60 days? Hey, maybe you've never paid off the debt. So a lot of things go into the credit report. How you pay, how you spend. You know, if I have a credit card with a limit of $1,000, you know, do I owe $1,000 on that credit card? Am I maxed out? Um, do I have a lot of outstanding debt? So all those things are real important. And so what, what, the, uh, what these credit bureaus do is, is based on all this information, you're given a FICO or your credit score. So the importance of always paying your bills on time and being responsible with your credit, not overextending yourself. What I mean by that is if I make $1,000 a month, you know, I cannot have $900 worth of you know, credit card payments. That includes your house, your cars, your credit cards, because then that's too much credit. And eventually what's going to happen is you're not budgeting well, and so you're kind of expending more than what you make. You're impulsive. You're buying things that maybe you don't need. So all that information is reported to the credit bureau. So 
pretty much um, what what the lending uh, what the lending companies or financial institutions look at is a basic FICO score or credit score of 640 or higher. Okay. So what happens if I have good credit? Well, if I have good credit, I'm able to take advantage of low interest rates on a home, right? And we all want to own our home one day, right? Um, we, we take advantage of low interest rates on cars. Um, if I have good credit and I'm a student that's going to college and I'm going to rent an apartment, guess what? It's going to be easier for me to get into an apartment or get a cell phone, or if I need a student loan, you know, if I don't have enough for financial aid and I need to borrow, or my parent needs to be a co-signer for my college loan, if my credit is good, I'm going to get a good interest rate on that college loan, on that student loan. So, um, so there is a website, and I don't know that we passed that out, Jerry. Yeah, it's actually there. Okay, there, on the handout that we're giving you, there is a website. For those of you that don't know what your credit score is, there is a website that is called annualcreditreport.com. And you can, go, you, you can go onto this website and don't sign up, you know, if they want to sell you like a free membership, I mean a membership or whatever, don't sign up for anything. All you want to do is once a year you are able to obtain a free copy of your credit report. And see what's in your credit report. You know, uh, are there any lates? Um, you know, how are you protecting your information? You know, nowadays, you know, there could be identity theft and maybe somebody's using your credit. So it's real important that we go and we look at this, especially if we have kids that are going to start college, you know, I'm going to need financing, you know, to pay for, you know, maybe a year of tuition or whatever. You know, start planning and see how your credit is so that if you have to go and borrow, you know, you're not going to have any troubles and the credit will be granted to you. Okay? So did everybody get that? Annualcreditreport.com. Yes? Okay. So um, other things that are real important as it relates to credit is, you know, be careful with your information. There's a lot of identity theft going on right now. A lot of it. So, you know, folks sometimes are fishing for information. They'll call you on the phone. They want to obtain your social security number. Don't ever give out this information unless, I mean, if it's a financial institution calling you or a business, they should have all your information. So please do not be giving out your social security number to people that don't need to know. And if they want to know it, why are you asking for it? You know, a lot of times, I know I see a lot of people that carry all the Social Security cards of their kids in their wallets. Don't do that. Don't do that because if you're, if you're, you know, if you forget your purse somewhere, someone has access to all that information. So very, very important to protect your information. Okay. Also, um, there are some websites where if you do fall into some sort of identity theft, you know, you can always go online and you can also seek help how you can clear it. And I'll tell you that we see a lot of this going on. It's a big thing in the United States right now. So just please sure, you know, ensure that you're working with the authorities, uh, checking on your Social Security. You can go onto the Social Security website and get, if you're working, get a, an earning statement to ensure that nobody in Michigan or in, you know, somewhere up north is, is, is also using your Social Security number. All these things are real important. There's a lot of information out there. So what questions do we have around credit and the importance of good credit? Yes, ma'am. I have a couple questions. Um, my father always told me about the FICO credit score, mm -hmm. and so that's what you know, we, we subscribe to. And how, does, how do things like Credit Karma and those, because my son, my oldest one, thinks that I don't need to even worry about that. Credit Karma is now going to get how, how does that fare in terms of the... Does it, I mean, does it give you a true picture of what your credit score is? Yes. You know, there are, and thank, that's a great question. There are a lot of creditors out there that will, that, that will monitor your credit and really tell you what your FICO is. And let me just tell you that here at Capital One, we have something like that. Once you, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're a credit card owner of Capital One, we give you your credit score. So they do something like that. Now, what, what a lot of these companies also do is not only do they provide you your FICO score, but they will alert you if somebody's checking into your credit, let's say there was a inquiry at uh, Bank of America, they're going to send you an email or a notice saying, hey, Bank of America inquired or, or had a, you know, uh, 
there was an inquiry on your credit for on your credit and so you get that alert and so if you have not you know and, and they'll tell you you know is this something that you did and if you didn't then they'll take care of it for you so some of them have that protection that credit protection and once a year or quarterly they'll send you a copy of everything that's on your credit report it's good to subscribe but you do have to pay some of them have a fee of like 9.99 or 12.99 it just depends what service you you uh, you uh, prescribe or subscribe to, but that is a great I mean that's a great service to have because you always want to know who's checking my credit, what's happening out there. You know sometimes you go to the doctor and you pay your doctor bill right, and then all of a sudden there's a collection agency for whatever, and you're like, what did I do? You know who is this? Well, a lot of times if you don't get those notices, that goes into your credit bureau. A telephone bill, if you don't pay your cell phone. If, let's say you don't pay uh, Time Warner, you leave a balance or, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that can go into your credit report. Another thing that's real important is these credit, these credit repair places that are out there, you all can repair your own credit. They charge you upfront fees for stuff that you can do yourself, like, you know, pulling your, you know, asking for your credit report from annualcreditreport.com. And then if there's something that is not yours that's on there, all you need to do, and you'll have the name of the business, their address, you, you write to them and say, hey, you know, hey, credit report, you know, TransUnion, Experian, you know, Equifax, you know, Bank of America says I've got this, but I don't have any. And they, you know, there is a regular regulation by law. The credit report agency has to investigate. They have a certain amount of days they have to investigate, and they check with that creditor, and if it's not yours, they wipe it off your credit report. But you all can do it yourself. You don't have to pay someone to do this stuff for you. Who can tell me what goes into making a good credit score? Who can tell me one thing that goes into making a good credit score? Okay. Paying on time. Very good. What else? balance of debt to income ratio. Debt to income ratio. Who knows what debt to income ratio is? The amount of credit you have as opposed to the income you have. Correct. So basically, the gentleman mentioned paying on time. Paying on time is very important. Actually, paying ahead of time is better. Instead of paying the minimum, because you get a statement and it says the minimum payment is $25, so I go and I give $25. It's always better to pay the most that you can. So instead of $25, do $35 or do $50 or whatever it is that you can. The other thing is, typically, when you, you're issued a credit card, you're given a certain line of credit. So a certain amount of credit is available to you, $1,000 or $2,000, right? A great rule of thumb, which affects your credit, is never extend or never utilize more than 50% of that line. So if you have a $1,000 line of credit on this one MasterCard, you never want to charge more than $500. Also, you know, you go out, you get married, you have a quinceanera, and you go to Zales and you use a, you get a, a big diamond ring or whatever, and they, of course, open a charge account, you pay it off, and you think, well, that's great, I paid it off, I'm good, right? Well, guess what? You have that outstanding credit line of $5,000 or whatever the ring cost you. So even though in your mind you think, well, I don't owe any money, so I'm good, that credit limit is still there available for your use, right? So all of those credit lines that you have that you're not utilizing affect your credit. They go against your credit because what the lender looks at is, well, potentially, this person can go out tomorrow and charge up all those lines to the max, and so that's really just what their liability is. So whenever you pay off, you go to Best Buy, you, pay, you, may, you buy a large TV, you pay it off, or you go to cons and you buy uh, you know, appliances, any type of large purchases like that, and you're paying them on time, you're paying ahead of time, you're paying the, minimum, you know, the maximum amount, you keep going, and it's all paid off, what you should do at that point, you don't want to close the credit line because when you close the credit line, the history, the payment history goes away. And that's what a lender looks at. So you don't want to close it, but you want to pick up the phone and you say, you know what, I want to reduce my line to say $250. Because if you go back to Zales next year and you want to buy a watch for $5,000, they're going to give you the credit back and they'll increase it. 
But in the meantime, between now and that next major purchase, all of those large credit limits aren't going against you. So you pick up the phone and you say, hey, Mr. Zales, I want to reduce it to 250. Hey, Mr. Best Buy, I want to reduce it to 250. Something minimal. You don't want to close it because you want a potential lender to see your payment history. But you don't want to leave those maxed out because that really affects your credit. Another thing, if you're going to co-sign for someone, uh, if you're going to co-sign for someone, it's yours. You own it. So you need to make sure that you're co-signing for someone that you can truly trust and they're going to be very responsible in making those payments because the moment they're late, guess what? It's going to affect your credit. And we see a lot of couples, husband and wives coming in, and now, you know, everything was lovey-dovey in the beginning, but then now they're divorced, and they've got all kinds of debt, credit cards, cars. And, well, no, the judge said that it all went to her, so I don't have to pay anything. It, it's on the divorce decree. Well, guess what? It's on your credit because you signed, and no matter what that divorce decree states, it's going to affect your credit. So you've got to be real careful. It's best to say, you know, just, you know, I know we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I know I'm already extended already. It's not, even, you know, it's not even going to work. Don't even add me there. You might, you know, it might hurt you. But find a way to either be very, I mean, be very careful that it's a responsible person, or I would just stay away from that, and I just would not do it, you know. And like Cynthia says, because let's say it was a joint account at Zales, and then everybody goes their way. Well, what if this person goes back and charges? Hey, you're gonna you're gonna be right up there, char you know, owing that balance. So, what other questions do you all have about about credit? Yes. Sir. How much truth? Is, I know you mentioned right now to you check your credit for once a year. But I think you're, like if you're gonna buy a big person, maybe you're gonna buy a house, you're gonna buy a car, something like that. And as the, the people that you're buying from are looking for different entities to be able to uh, finance you, that the more they check, that that lowers your credit score. Is there any truth to that? That is a great question. It and depends on what you're buying. buying. Yes. Okay. So if I'm shopping for a car, it's Saturday morning, and I'm shopping for a car, and I go to eight different dealers, and they all put my credit report, well, it's all from the, from the dealerships, you know what I mean? So, so they know that you're buying a car, but let's say Saturday morning and I'm going to the outlets. Because, you know what, I'm going to go shopping. So I go to Old Navy, and the lady there at Old Navy, she's real good, and she needs to sell a credit card and tells her, oh man, right now if you apply for a credit card, we're going to give you a 10% discount. Let's do it. And I save $5. And then I'm going to go to, you know, Macy's. And then Macy's, oh, man, if you apply for whatever, you're going to get whatever. And, and so you go from one department to another to another. That's going to affect you. In one day, your credit score can tank. In really? One day. Yes. This typically happens around the holidays. You know, you go to Target or you go to Kmart, and there's somebody standing at the door with a right. clipboard. There they are with a clipboard and a pen. Ready. Please go. Okay. If you, if you do this today, you're going to get 20% off. Oh, great, wow. That is a mistake because every time, to your point, every time somebody pulls your credit, the more times that score just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. So in one day, it can tank, but guess what? It takes potentially a year to build it back up to where it was. So in the case of car buying, where, where you're looking at a specific thing, they, they understand that and it won't affect it, It's a soft credit that goes out. So, so here's, here's the sales manager, and if, if they'll send it to like five different banks. And it's the same thing, like, and, and, and when it's going to be a mortgage, really what you want to do, that is a huge purchase. You want to work with your bank. You don't want to go to a mortgage broker. One, the mortgage broker is going to charge you a broker fees, another one or one and a half percent that you don't have to pay a bank. So if you go to your bank, I mean, that's who you really want. I mean, because your credit is going to be your credit at Bank of America or at Wells or at Capital. You know what I mean? So, so if you're going to do a major purchase like that, you know, try to go to your bank and, and don't tell the mortgage brokers that. <laughs> anyway, oh, you know, go to your bank. And you know what? This is another thing, and I'm going to end it here because I can go on and on. But if you, if y'all have a banking relationship, when was the last time your banker called you? You know, am I in the right bank? Is this the person that when I'm going to buy a car, I think I'm a banker? You guys, you've got to go and see who is my banker, 
Am I in the very best product? Are they really, I mean, giving me what is good, what is the best for me and my family? Am I saving money? And are they directing me, you know, in the right direction? Do they know what my retirement goals are? How can they help me rebuild credit? And let me just, I'm just going to give you another thing real quick. If you do have bad credit, please don't think that it's the end of the world. There's ways to fix your credit. There's credit card companies out there. I know we offer a secured credit card that helps you rebuild your credit. There's a lot of ways. So if you all are struggling with that, um, please come in and see us or go to your banker and tell them how can I do it and we will be able to advise you on that. And now is the time to do it. If you're thinking about putting kids through college, yes. you know, the sooner you do that, the better because it, it is it, it, a time consuming process. You know, it is very methodical and it takes, you know, potentially a couple of years <sighs> to get yourself back in good standing. And that way, when you go to apply for a college loan, you know, you're not going to be, first of all, you're going to be approved. And second of all, your interest rate is going to be reasonable. It's going to be manageable. Yes. And you're not going to be paying, you know, exorbitant fees and rates. Yes. I have a good question. Because I, I, I am looking to buy a new car. Good. And so <laughs> and one, of the, one of the things I've been doing is uh, applying for uh, the uh, financing for the dealership for okay. the, or the the yeah, they they, yes. And so it, you, they tell you, well, apply and you have until four weeks to decide and we'll offer you so much money. Does that, does that application yeah. stay open for that yes. period? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But after, after so many, you know, and after so many weeks, you'll have to, there'll be another hit. So try to stay, to so try to stay within, within that time. So, so if you reapply, then, it, then it's better it'll affect not, yes. yeah. And is it better to go to a bank or a financial institution and get a pre-approved pre yes. loan and say, yes. I already have my financing? Yes, because that helps your negotiation. Yes, because and you all know the drill. You know, you go and the, oh, the salesman says, well, I'm going to go talk to the credit mm -hmm. manager. And then they come and you spend their eight hours, you know, buying one vehicle because all of this rigmarole is just they're trying to wear you down. If you walk in already with your financing, essentially you're going to say, you're not going to say, I have a trade in. You're not going to say, you're going to say, I'm a cash buyer. And so then they're negotiating with you with that in their head. And so they know that all of this other credit report, I mean, credit manager <coughs> business is not going to work. Yeah. So you go in and you say, I'm a cash buyer. Don't tell them if you have a trade. Don't tell them you have a trade until after the fact. Because then they're, 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 they're going to negotiate that way. And then you say, at the end, you say, okay, so you've already decided on the deal, the price, and all of that. And then you say, okay, now I've got the trade. And then they go, oh. And then that comes off of the deal they made you. So it is recommended that you go to try to get financed through financial institution. Yes, and, 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 and the way it works is you submit the, you know you submit the application and then they'll tell you you're approved up to you know forty five thousand dollars and they will send you a black check. You know what your limit is. So with this check, you just go to the you know whatever dealership you want and you just write your check. And on that check, you know, it's got the promissory note is pretty much typed on the back of what it is. So, yeah. That's Whatever amount you write the check yeah. for, that's the amount of your loan. And the same thing when you're buying a house. If you're buying a house, you know, go and get pre-approved first. It's so important because we see so many people that want to buy this mansion. And we're like, wait a minute, it's not going to work out, you know. You've got to work with your budget. You've got to work with what you're going to be able to afford because we want our customers to stay in their homes. We don't want you with a huge payment where two or three you know, years down the road, guess what? You're not going to make it. So very important. Always get pre-approved first for any major purchase. It's easier at the end. Question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what would you recommend or how would you recommend for the students here to start building their credit? Okay. So we, you know, we, we said that uh, there's a lot of institutions out there that offer secured credit cards. That's the best way. So what you do is, you know, and with Capital One Bank, as little as $49 that you leave um, it, as a security, you get a $49 credit card that you start, you know, maybe charging $20 and then paying the minimum and then, you know, you use it and, and you continue using it and that's going to be reported to your credit report. So secured, a secured credit card is the best way. It's secured against a savings account. Yeah. Savings so the account. more you put money, so it's kind of like you're killing two birds with one stone because you're establishing a savings account and then you're building your credit at the same time. And the moment you want to close it out, you know, you can. You can close it out and once the card is paid in full, you get your money back. 
Well, and then that a lot of people use that as a stepping stone because you start with that type of credit card, the secure credit card, and you manage that well, you know, over a year or two, and then the next thing you know is you're applying for a regular credit card, and then you 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 know you kind of graduate up to to a regular credit card. So it's it's good. It's a good way to start. Yeah, it is a very good way. Great question. The other one, actually, I would recommend is even the Walmart card because they report it to the credit bureau. And I know a lot of us go to Walmart. Uh, and that's something, you know, of course, you want to use it but pay it, but it's something that you are going to be using. Uh, so that's another a great product. Okay. Any other questions on credit? Anything else? No? Okay. I'm going to transfer. Well, now I'm going to introduce you to Eddie. And I think you already met Eddie. So Eddie's going to talk about what we do here. <laughs> all right, guys, my name's Eddie. We're going to talk about checking and savings for a little bit. I don't want to bore you guys all today. How many of you guys have checking accounts already? Awesome. So a lot of people already have checking accounts. And one of the things that's very important to have a checking account is not only do you, if you work at a job where they offer direct deposit, you get your money right away. So you don't have to waste time anymore about going to the bank, waiting in line, cashing your check, and depositing into your account, things like that. So those are the easy ways to save uh, time. It gives you guys the opportunity, you know what, right after work, instead of going to the bank, you go home and you relax and you rest. So it's important to have a checking account for those means. It saves you time. Uh, the checking account is also important because you get a debit card. How many of you guys use the debit card? A lot of you guys, right? Now, where can you use the debit card at? Everywhere, everywhere right? Everywhere they accept your, you know, whatever logo you have, the Visa, the MasterCard. Uh, you know, for the most part, you use, use it anywhere you go. So that's a good thing about it is that you don't have to be carrying around money anymore. You can just go and, and use your debit card to purchase anything that you like at any store. Now, another thing on the debit card is um, one of the things that's very good to have is because what happens if you were to lose your wallet or what happens if you get your wallet stolen? What happens then? What do you guys normally do when it happens to that? Panic. You panic, right? <laughs> well, one of the good things about having a debit card is that you can call the bank and tell them, you know what, I lost my debit card, they stole my debit card, please cancel it. That way they don't you know, use your debit card and steal money from your account. And one of the best things about having the protection is that you are able to get that money back even if they did go use it at stores for gasoline, you know, most of the time they use it at gas. So, uh, you know, but you get the protection of the bank where they're going to give you that money back and when you have your money on your wallet, you tend to lose that money. There's no way that we can say, you know what, I had the $100, you can't, you, you, you lost the $100 already. So that's why it's important for you guys to have a checking account uh, and that way you can utilize your debit card so you can have that protection for you guys. And then on some of the uh, logos that have like the Visa, MasterCard, they protect you on certain things that you purchase. So sometimes if you purchase electronics, they give you an insurance on it. If you go and rent a car, you get insurance on it as well. So there's a lot of good coverages by using your debit card, but as credit as well, because it gives you those extra protections for you. Uh, and that way you don't have to worry about any of those items right there. Um, one of the things that we offer here at Capital One is uh, the benefits of having our, our checking accounts with us is that it comes with rewards. So the more you use your debit card as credit or debit, you earn reward points. So this is money that we're giving you for using your for using your debit card and for having the, the account with Capital One. And with those, you get free miles for traveling. Uh, if you've seen the commercials now, you have Samuel L. Jackson promoting it. You have uh, uh, the female. Jennifer Gardner. There you go, Jennifer yeah, Gardner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the beautiful Jennifer Gardner promoting the no blackout dates when you travel. So. Those are some of the benefits that we have here at Capital One when you have your checking accounts with us. Um, so it's good to have an account. It, you're protected. You don't have to. You, you have. You save time. You're not worried about any of those things on it. So let me just ask a little question real quickly. Um, who can tell me why is it important for the debit card? Just a quick question. And I'll give you a little price. Anybody? Why is it important to have the checking account debit card? What does it protect you from? There you go. Steph, like if you were to get anything stolen, you would get that uh, hidden back. Any other response on that? What does it cover? Like on uh, if it uh, for, if you get your debit card stolen and it's used, uh, what happens then? Do you get protected or it does not protect it? It's protected, it's protected, right? So it gives you that benefit on there. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about having the checking account. Whenever you get paid with your direct deposit 
or you come in and deposit a check, what do you normally do from there? Do you guys ever save any money? Do you guys have any, does anybody have a savings account as well? Awesome, so I guess that's good, you guys are saving. So one of the things that's a, a good uh, rule of thumb is to at least have 10 to 20% of your checking, of your money that comes from your check to get transferred over to your savings. So you wanna save a, a little bit of money every time you get paid. I don't know if you get paid once a month, if you get paid twice a month, you know, it doesn't matter. You always wanna have a little bit, at least 10% to 20% get transferred over to your savings so you can use that money for what would, what would be a good reason for you to save some money? Can anybody tell me? Emergency, any type of an emergency. There you go. Emergencies, you wanna use it for traveling. Maybe you wanna, you know, plan a trip. How many of you guys have girls? Quinceañeras, how do those sneak up to you, right? So a quinceañera, the sweet 16s, those are very important for you to have the savings account because those things are really come in handy a lot. You don't have to worry about it. Once you're born, you know what, start that savings account so you guys can start saving a little bit of money. You know you know they're gonna come, you know you're gonna, they're gonna want a quinceañera or a sweet 16, you wanna start saving some money for that reason. I have a, I have a quick story. Okay. <laughs> I have a quick story. My daughters every year for Christmas and for birthdays get money from the grandparents, from the aunts, from the uncles, all that stuff. So what was happening was they would hoard that money and keep that money and then they and then we'd go to the mall and I would say, they'd say, Mom, I want this, I want that, and I'd say, Well, you have your money, you have your Christmas money. Oh well, no. <laughs> and after that it was like, Oh well that's too expensive, I don't want to buy it. So I think it's a really good idea to that teaches them the value of money. You know, you can come to the bank, any bank will give you a check register, an empty check register that you can you can uh, give to your kids and they can start tracking what they're doing. And anytime, what, what I started doing is I opened a savings account for them so whenever they get Christmas money or birthday money, all of it goes into their savings account. They get a, a little percentage, you know, that they can keep and do whatever they want with, but the rest of it goes in a savings account for college. And they're able to track it on one of those checkbook registers where who gave it to them and the amount, and that way they can always see how much they have, and that's a great way to teach multiple things. So exactly. No, it's okay. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> so those are good things to do, guys. So, you know, if you got kids, if you got grandchildren, you can start those savings accounts with them. Uh, you know, and, and you know, teach them the importance of coming to save. So whenever they get a birthday check, like this, uh, uh, Graham said, uh, you can have them come with you and you can deposit that money into the account. And that way they can start saving their money and whenever they want something, because most of the time, like I said, you go to Walmart and I, they go to the toy aisle, I want this, I want this, okay, well let me get some money from your account. And that's when they're like, no, nah, never mind, I don't want it no more. So, You'll save you know, a lot of money that way. Too. Exactly, you send to save a lot of money. So that's why it's important for you guys. But now, as an adult, one of the main things that you want to have a savings account is, Let's say you've never had a house, but you're wanting to buy a house. Well, nowadays, most of the time, when you go to a mortgage specialist, the first thing they ask you, how much money do you have in your checking? How much money do you have in your savings? Because what do they want from you? A down payment, right? So the, most of the time, they're going to ask for a down payment. So it's good to already have that savings account, and that way you already have a certain amount of money in there saved. That way it won't be a big burden for you to try and come up with that uh, down payment. So the, another thing is emergencies. How many times as little kids do we get hurt? And I vamos al doctor, you know what I mean? So you're, you're running to the doctor and how are you gonna pay them? Well, that's the good thing about having your savings account is that you already have money saved up so you wanna give that money, you know what? If you're gonna use it for an emergency, use it for that emergency. And a lot of times just for trips, you know what? If you want a trip, uh, you know, you wanna go to Europe, you know, you have that money accessible for you that if you ever wanna go on a trip, you have that money where you can take it out and use that money for the trip. So. Let's just do, uh, recap a little bit. How, what's the rule of thumb to save money uh, from your check? How much is the percentage that you want to save every time you get your check? 10 to 20. All right, here, here's your first thing. <laughs> here's the yeah. So, um, remember, it's very important that you can use that, you know, savings, a checking account, it's gonna help you, it's gonna protect you at all times. So you guys wanna always have that protection, that peace of mind. Here at Capital One, we have a savings account. 
Now the interest, you know what, you get interest, the more you deposit into it, the more of course you're gonna get back from the interest. So it's good for you to have the accounts with us. Capital One has a lot of benefits, like I said, from the checking account and the savings account. So it's good and it's very important for you guys to start helping your kids learn how to be able to utilize your checking accounts and the savings accounts so that way in the future we're not lost and not knowing you know what you go to H-E-B and sometimes you see somebody with a check still writing out a check and you're like oh I'm in a hurry I want to just like push out of the way and you know swipe you know that's why you want to have that <laughs> you want to you know make sure that you have that debit card and just swipe and you go on your way you know that's why it's important for you to teach them that now online banking we have a lot nowadays you can view your accounts at home on your cell phone. Nowadays, everybody has a smartphone. You can log on and look at your accounts online, and you can be able to see your accounts online, and you can transfer money within accounts. So it's no longer a hassle to go to the bank. It's no longer a hassle to do anything. Everything you can do it at the, you know, in the palm of your hand or at home. So you have your privacy at home. That you can also do your finances. You can pay your bills using your your computer at home. Uh, there's a lot of benefits in having the accounts with us. So. We have the ATM deposits now that you can also utilize. You know, what nowadays, if you get paid still by check, if your business still doesn't offer direct deposit, you know what, you can get that check, go to the ATM, you can either deposit it through there or even on your smartphone now, you can deposit through there. By taking a picture of the front and back of your check, you have the ability to deposit that money into your accounts by the following day. So there's a lot of benefits in having those opportunities with Capital One. Uh, you know, if you haven't, if you don't bank with us, I would really want you guys to come in and talk to some of our bankers that we have here at the branch, so that way you guys can get an understanding of how it works and what are the benefits out of it as well. So, does anybody have any questions? No. So, how many of you guys bank with Capital One already? Oh, okay. Well, thank, you. thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. So. Ms. Aida? Yes, Alberto, thank you. I mean, it's just such a wealth of knowledge. It's like from an educator point of view into a, the banking world. It's like, wow, so much crucial information. And it's so eminent that our kids, our students, know this kind of stuff at the onset so, because we begin with the end in mind. We want them to make good choices with their finances and the big picture. So at this time, we want to thank all the Capital One Bank staff and the director. Thank you so very much. Melissa Lopez and my specialist, Chris uh, McKinney, who just wa walked in when after I introduced everyone. Thank you so much for coming. And we've been learning so much from Mel. Mel has been you know, bringing us a wealth of knowledge. She's getting it down the pipeline as well.